there's a deer hunting. I don't get upset very much, but that deer is dead, like 100% dead. Here we go, yet another fantastic episode of Deer Season 22. You know, each and every one of these episodes has a little bit different flavor to it. Some are very, very entertaining, some are informational, and this particular episode is a little bit of both. I think this is one you're gonna really enjoy. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by the new specially designed, lightweight and durable Tenzing Hangtime Day Pack. Go further, hunt longer, Tenzing. Well, this starts out somewhat with a teaser that we, we kind of gave you when we showed you mom's episode. We talked about a deer called Double Stickers, appropriately Double Stickers. He had two little bitty flyers off a of G2 the previous year. This year, he's only got one, so he probably should be two minus one, but we ended up keeping the name or donning that name Double Stickers and it stuck with him. This started out in the year of 2019 and double stickers at that time didn't have any stickers. He was just a beautiful little three and a half year old deer, beautiful 10 point. As luck would have it, we had an encounter with him. Real pretty little three year old deer, it's a beautiful deer. Give him about two more, two more years, he'll, he'll be somebody. But he's gorgeous, gorgeous looking 10. And uh, it just turned out to be one heck of an evening, one heck of an encounter. Then as 2020 rolled around, we didn't really forget about him, but we didn't have any MRI, if you will. There were no velvet pictures, no footage of him. You know, we thought maybe he'd gotten killed. We thought maybe he died of EHD. We just weren't certain what happened to him. And then all of a sudden, he shows up late season in December. And uh, we were like, okay, he still survived. He's around, he made it through. You know, it's always, kind of uh, pins and needles if they make it through the firearm season, and he did that. So there in December, we had a little bit of food, and he was on the uh, food plots and got some photos of him, got some Reconyx pictures of him, so we go, okay, thank goodness he did make it. In January, Forrest just happened to be doing uh, some late season doe harvest, and as luck would have it, but who shows up? There's double stickers, he still doesn't have that name, but uh, that's who shows up in Forrest. Got some pictures of him that night, got some footage of him, and we were tickled to death that he made it through. As a four-year-old, he's really starting to kind of show what kind of frame, what kind of uh, time length he's gonna have, so we're pretty excited about having him back. With that being said, we started something that I was absolutely reluctant to do, and that is a logging operation. With that logging operation comes a lot of disturbance and we're, we're as low pressure as low pressure gets. We never want to have any intrusion whatsoever, but I had uh, lost a lot of beautiful white oak trees to a drought that happened the previous year. All of a sudden, many of those were dying and falling over and I just couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand to watch these trees go to waste. So we said, you know what, let's do some select harvest. We got a hold of a guy by the name of Chris Nichols, who's a tremendous logger. Highly recommend this guy. We said, Chris, here's what we need, and he did just that. We took every tree or every really viable tree that was over 20 to 22 inches, and we left a crop, if you will. We wanted to make sure that we kept all those beautiful white oaks and red oaks and black oaks and making sure that we had a, a crop for future years, and Chris helped us with that, and that's exactly what he came in and did. And uh, you know, this operation was pretty intrusive, if you will, uh, but it, it was necessary at the time. With that being said, after they got done doing the bulk of the work, man, we did a major, major cleanup trying to manicure this piece of property and make it as beautiful and as park-like as we possibly could. We had one of our operators come in, run the skid steer, get it all dressed down, had an excavator in there, uh, dressing it all down. Forrest went through extra efforts, seeding it multiple times and uh, just making this as beautiful as we possibly could and lo and behold, the grass has just blossomed. I mean, it was unbelievable how much cover we created besides pushing a lot of those tops down into the ravines and making bedding areas, specific bedding areas. We had this beautiful forest floor now looking park-like. As you go through a winter and then a spring and, and what have you, and they shed their antlers and you, you know they start growing the following year, all of a sudden he's back, you know, he stayed. I don't think he ever left. We kept logging that in the back of our minds saying, all right, if he makes it through this year at age five, how will he look at age six and a half? And uh, we just kept kind of storing all that away. 
Now we're in 2022, the spring of 2022. Forrest had seeded in 21. He went back and overseeded again in 2022. And that's when we got the torrential rains and it just stayed wet as could be a lot of rain. And it seemed like every single seed that he threw onto the ground germinated and the grasses just came pouring out of the ground. We then said, you know what? We need to cut a road and trim a road. This is all by design, trim a road out to the food plot to make sure that these deer come onto that food plot exactly where we want them to. And by golly, it started working. Once they started using that trail, it became second nature to them. Double stickers did not leave. He just stayed there. And uh, we had a beautiful, beautiful green soybean field there for food plot. And uh, all I can say is once he found them, once he got on them, he stayed on them. And we continued getting Reconyx trail camera pictures. And uh, we were like, you know what? If he stays here and these beans stay green, it's a low lying area, it's fairly wet. And we said, if, if you hold him through velvet, and we can hold him once he turns hard horn, we may be able to go in there and hunt him. And we get the harebrained idea to go in there and mow a strip and uh, do our due diligence. And we want to plant biologic. I've got a tree stand right there that takes a south, southeast wind. And we thought, man, if he can come out this road that we cut through the area that we just logged and through all those tall grasses and get him onto this food plot, he should walk right in front of our tree stand. All we need to do is go in there and plant the biologic and we didn't get the rain. I mean, all of a sudden now we got a dirt track right in front of the tree stand and I just pushed this deer outside of bow range when he would have been inside of bow range. So uh, we were a little bit perplexed and I was upset with myself because I typically don't do that, but I thought, man, this is the perfect opportunity to do some food plot architecture. Well, we outthought ourselves just a little bit there. So we get this brilliant idea because I just pushed him out of bow range from the tree stand that takes a south southeast. Let's put a muddy blind on an Omega lift trailer right in the middle of beans. If he's still eating and still coming to him, maybe he'll uh, give us an opportunity for a shot. Well, in here today, we got nine days till the season starts September 6th and gonna make a pretty bold move. Um, this is a field that Ben and I came in about two weeks ago and hot wired right before I left for my honeymoon. And uh, as you can see, we have not got the rain. This field is not grown at all. And one of our shooters, he's kind of shifted his core area and he's living in here. So that could change once he goes hard horn. But today we're gonna pull the hot wire and then tomorrow gonna pull it on mega lift of the muddy blind and park it on the bean in the beans here right behind uh, right behind me. Hopefully we get a shot at him here once the season opens. two spots. We've got a tree stand for a south-southeast. We've got a muddy blind for a southwest. Uh, we're kind of set up. All we need is for double stickers to uh, make an appearance. Deer cast has got a good predictor for this evening, so hopefully we'll uh, get an opportunity. The deer we're looking for is a deer we call double stickers. We had a, a, a lot of pictures, a lot of history with him last year. So uh, it's just a different plan. You got to strategize a little bit differently, but hey, we're up for that. That's what that we're all about. It's changing plans, it's adjusting.
we had one heck of an encounter with him one evening. We're sitting in a tree stand shooting the vertical Matthews bow. Uh, this thing is looking like it's going to shape up exactly like what every bow hunter wants. He's feeding like an old hog coming right down the biologic, even though it's about this tall and it, and it didn't have a lot of uh, fallen weather, not a lot of moisture, but he was still on it. And we were excited as could be thinking, man, it's now or never, this is gonna happen. And uh, I'm waiting for him to make sure that he, get, he gets a broadside or quartering away. He's got to take maybe another step or two. I was so mad at me that day, I, and I, we've been doing this a long, long time, but rarely do you let a deer of that caliber get into 23 or 24 yards and then let him walk off, and that's exactly what happened that day. You, as a hunter, you are only gonna get so many opportunities throughout the season, and you either jump through the window or you slam it shut, and that was one we slammed shut that day, and I was just not very happy. Maybe the most incredible evening I've had in 50 years of deer hunting. I literally was just coming to full. I was, I'm on the wrong side of the tree, if you will, even though I'm a lefty. I was waiting until he was broadside. Forrest would have, could have killed him a million times, but I was waiting for him to take a few more steps until he was broad or quartering away. And right as I was coming to full draw, he, I, felt the, I felt a little backdraft just going right over the top and our thermals are dropping. We had the perfect wind all night long. I mean, it was absolutely perfect. And then right when he's here at 20 yards, a little bitty backdraft came and, and our thermals are dropping and he, he just caught me, caught us. But I don't get upset very much, but that deer is dead, like 100% dead. Well, now what? Hot shot. Now, what adjustments are you going to make? You know, we've made all the adjustments that we can think of. We've tried to adapt. We've tried to do all the right things. Are we ever going to get another chance at this deer? Only the good Lord above knows. DeerCast is giving away a hunt with Mark and Terry Drury, a tracker side by side, and a hawk box blind. Enter to win using the DeerCast app or DeerCast.com and get ahead of your game. I'm loving this weather. Like we got a little bit of cloud cover, but we got a nice breeze this evening. We're going into a spot uh, that we've had one deer in particular, a, uh, a deer we call double stickers. He's only got one sticker this year. We gave him the name last year. He's been frequenting this spot quite a bit. It looks like a baseball diamond where we went in there. We uh, mowed some of the beans. Forest has planted and replanted and replanted and, and uh, we just haven't gotten any, any moisture. So they're eating what little bit's coming up. I will say that, but boy, it's slim pickings right now. So I don't know if he's still on it or not. He'd walk by it five or six nights out of seven. 
So uh, we're gonna go try our luck. We're crazy not to. The wind is uh, not perfect, but it's pretty good. So we're gonna give it a try. And uh, how about Wade bopping a giant? I mean, last night, uh, late last night, and then I think I got the text around midnight or 1 a.m. where they found him. And then mom, uh, of all people, she shows us her marksmanship and puts a tremendous shot on a deer. Uh, couldn't be happier. That's a highlight of the season right there. At 89 and a half, she'll be 90 in April. Uh, being able to navigate those ladders and get up in the blinds. She just had a knee replacement. Can't say enough. What a motivation for all of us. So uh, our season is made just because our mother killed a deer, but uh, it topped it off to have Wade, Wade bop a 188 inch giant last night as well. So the season rolls on and we're happy to be a part of it. Come on, Forrest. Is there anything you want to say? Talk to me, Forrest. We need to kill a big one of our own to contribute. <laughs> yeah, so we can do all that stuff. Getting tired of watching them boys. We'll have our time. Yeah, it'll come. Unfortunately, I didn't have the southeast for the tree stand, but I did have a southwest. So that muddy blind that we pulled out in the center of those beans or right in the edge of those beans became ever increasingly important. Well, all we needed was the one deer, and sure enough, all of a sudden he pops out of the timber, and here he is, he's standing back there at about 70 yards. All he's gotta do is work his way into our position. All we had to do was get him stopped, kind of out in front of those scrape trees, get him stopped, put the shot on him, and uh, see if we could get him on the ground.
I would rather be lucky than good any day of the week. Well, by golly, <laughs> number one, we've been praying for rain for weeks. And the moment I hit this deer, all of a sudden it started raining. That wasn't my intention. <laughs> I was still using a 2.3 rage chisel, and I'm glad I did. It obviously cut an artery. He ran maybe 80 yards from where I hit him, and uh, there he lays. I couldn't be happier. And we would not have pursued this deer right away. Had it not been raining, I'd have got out of here, went back, watched the hit, and then we'd come back in. But by golly, there he lays. There he is. That's awesome. He is a stud. Look at the main beams and the tines on that dude. My mom is going to be so happy. <laughs> she really wanted Forrest and I to kill some deer. He is legally tagged. October 5th, we're here on my farm in northern Missouri, and he is tagged. Well, I cannot say enough. Uh, you know, happiness is, but uh, I think gratitude and thankfulness comes first. And I gotta thank the good Lord above and my pop who's upstairs looking down on us. You know, we've been praying for rain for weeks. And the moment I hit this deer, it started raining. So I don't know if that was a sign to say, go look for him, he's laying right there, because I would not have done that. I'd have backed out. Uh, just as I got ready to release the arrow, he rolled forward a little bit, and I hit him back, and we got lucky. I think it cut uh, a, one of those main arteries, and all I can say is I would rather be lucky than good any day of the week, but it says a lot about that 2.3 cutting diameter. I'm not pulling much poundage at all this year. I was concerned about penetration. I was thinking about going to a smaller head, but shot a doe the other night, it zipped right through her, and I felt pretty good about it at that distance. And uh, it, it, it just, it just, we got lucky with him. We've been uh, really studying Reconic's pictures. He's been coming through that gap. He walked through there like six out of seven nights or something. So we hunted it last night. He didn't show up. And we said, you know what? Our odds are much higher that he'd show up tonight. And by golly, he did just that. There's so much work goes into this. We did the entire logging operation previous spring. Uh, Forrest did an uh, inordinate amount of work as far as putting electric fence up, trying to get a crop to grow there. And then we came in, we, we mowed some beans, planted Biologic, and uh, doggone it, we just didn't get any moisture. But the little bit that did come up, I mean, they are mauling it. And uh, he's been eating it. I had an encounter with him a few nights ago, about a week or so ago, and I just didn't get him dead. I was on the backside of a tree. We hunt the tree on a southeast, pulled the blind in there for a southwest, and uh, Forrest did that as well. And, you know, there's just so much that goes into the chess match. It, it looks easy, like every time we climb a tree, you kill one of these, but it's not like that. We spend an inordinate amount of time and effort, and I can't thank Forrest enough for all he does. Uh, being able to harvest a deer like this is just an absolute gift from heaven. 
That one uh, was one for the ages, one I'll never forget. Uh, a beautiful buck that made it to age six and a half because we decided to pass him or elected to pass him. Started at age three and a half, another history. And uh, like I said, these are not only in entertaining, but we hope you picked up just a little bit of information out of it as well that can help you kill the next deer, uh, maybe this upcoming or next season. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by MOTV. For full episodes of 13 and all of our Outdoor Channel content, head over to the MOTV app and view it today.